Okay, moving on in our senses unit, which this is a relatively shorter unit in terms of content. Well, in reality, I could add more. I just shrink it because I just like to do the fun stuff. Okay, reaction time, right? So what, what actually is reaction time? Okay, so let's find out. What is reaction time? Well, it's the time between a stimulus and a response. So that brings up a couple more questions. What are those vocabulary words? So what's a stimulus? A stimulus is a change in the environment that causes an organism to react. So in this case, we're really talking about us, the person. The plural is stimuli. So it's not stimuluses, stimuli. <clears throat> the stimulus can be internal or external, although primarily in this we're focusing on external. Examples, a loud noise, a dog barking, a notification on your phone. Those are all a stimulus. It could be touching a hot stove. <clears throat> and then what is the response? Well, the response is the action or movement because of the stimulus. So the loud noise, cover your ears. Dog barks, look at the dog. Okay, notification, pick up your phone. Okay, touch a hot stove, move your hand away. Okay, so you view the stimulus, you process it, you send a response, and there's an action. So the action is the response, how you respond, how your body acts because of a stimulus. And so then reaction time is the amount of time it takes for that whole cycle to happen, okay? And if you watch clips from, um, uh, let's see, haunted houses <clears throat> or those horrible videos of kids being scared by the Grinch this year in um, photo shoots, you can see reaction time. There is a, a gap between when the, the stimulus is actually presented and when you respond. Okay, So there is um, a quick test of reaction time. So let me show you. I'm going to click here to show you this website. <clears throat> and it's real simple. Okay, And I'll link this video in the description so you can see it. So all you do is you're, it says click anywhere to start. And then when the red box turns green, click as quickly as you can. So I'm going to click here to start. And all I do is wait for green. And as soon as I see green, click. Okay? And that's going to tell you your reaction time. You can try again. Okay, so you just wait for green. And as soon as, and then you click. Okay. Um, you can just practice a couple times just to see um, a quick judge of your reaction time. Mine have been around the same time, but remember, I'm also talking at the same time, so I am unfortunately also distracting myself, and our reaction time is better when we are not distracted. All right, so let's go back here. <clears throat> that's just a quick test. All right, so what's an outlier? So that's a data point that's very far away. So you can see when I first started, they were all around 200 high 200s. And then all of a sudden I got one that was 400 something. That could be considered an outlier. So it's one that's a little further away from all the data points. Um, for example, if uh, on a I gave a test and one student scored a 17, but everyone else scored between an 82 and a 96, that 17 is an outlier, like way, way, way off here. Okay. In the example with the um, reaction time, probably a better example, if all my results are around two and 300, and then I had one that was a thousand seconds. Whoa, that's weird. That's an outlier. So what are some things that can affect our reaction time? A lot. Okay. So age. Okay. Um, we might get slower. Okay. As we get older. Lighting. So we might respond slower because the lighting is poorer or the light could be too bright. So um, we're having trouble processing our physical fitness, our level of fatigue. How tired are you? How distracted are you You're trying to do something but somebody is talking to you? Okay, There's lots of noise going on. Um, alcohol affects our reaction time. <clears throat> also, the limb you use for your test. So in, in this example here where you see um, someone's holding a ruler and drop it and you're supposed to catch it. Um, there's going to be usually for most people a difference whether or not you use your dominant hand or your non-dominant hand. If we were in person, we'd be doing this. All right, so why is reaction time important? So why do we even spend any time talking about this? Well, reaction time allows us to be agile and efficient when things happen. Like it could be as simple as I'm walking down the hall and my cat walks in front of me. 
how quickly can I respond to that? Okay, that stimulus of the cat walking in front. But in, it also applies in very crucial situations like driving, having conversations. How are you interpreting the conversation you're having? Reacting to emergencies, okay? playing games and sports. You can see how, um, how quick are you at being able to respond when the pitch is thrown, when the gun is shot, when it's the start of the race, when the puck is dropped and a whole lot more. Reaction time is very important. Okay, so um, here you can see in this example, in this little clip, um, when it's dropped, um, she does not even close her hand in enough time to catch it. And that does not mean something is wrong with her. There could be a multitude of reasons explaining why she didn't catch it. Okay, and um, here's just a little joke. Um, you know, I didn't want anything. I just wanted to see how fast you could get here in an emergency. So screaming, the stimulus response, how quickly the parent talks. And that's it. That's reaction time. Okay. Uh, I think it's just a super fun topic. If we were in person, um, unfortunately, we're virtual um, right now. But in person, we would be doing some um, experiments uh, just to see and test your own reaction time.